Hollywood Unlocked, Uncensored. What up, everybody? This is Jay Lee, and this is going to be a provocative show for you. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood Unlocked, Uncensored. And what up? It's your girl, April Jones, and I'm in the building. It's DJ Damage. Let's get this show started. And if you're listening to the sound of my voice, you're probably listening to us on a platform that's paying us. iTunes, iHeart, Google Play, Spotify. And if you are on YouTube, you are watching what the fuck is about to go down. You know, somebody fucking tried me today. Somebody tried me today. What happened? Somebody tried me. You know what's so crazy is I really think of myself as a young, aspiring entrepreneur. Maybe not that young. Still cute, but not that young. Well, maybe not that cute either, but who gives a fuck, right? (laughs) I really feel like at no matter what level of success you have, you could be, I'm talk, we're talking to millions of people right now, millions and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people listening right now are listening and saying, damn, Hollywood Unlocked made it. No matter how far you make it as a brand, as an individual, somebody's still going to fucking try you. Mm. They're going to fucking try you. And something happened today that brought back one of my mentor's words that I'm going to fucking leave here and come up with a solution for. They said to me, uh, of what their expectations were. You know, motherfuckers have expectations. Yeah. Motherfuckers have expectations. Now, let me explain to you. An expectation always comes in the exchange of something, right? I'm going to marry you. I expect you to love me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to move in with you, and I'm, I'm, we're going to provide for each other. There's an expectation then that, that, comes with some, that comes with something. You can't expect something from somebody if you don't give them anything. Or you can't expect equal if you come less than Mm -hmm. somebody tried me today, I'm not going to say their name because they're listening because apparently they listen to my show because they've had a lot to say about it. I don't owe a motherfucker shit, but I realize that as long as I work for somebody or work with a partner, if that partner is not equally yoked or believe that their yoke is much more than mine, they will feel like I fucking owe them something. Mm -hmm. I don't owe anybody shit because I'm thinking of all the other young entrepreneurs out there that listen to the show who are saying that they're going to make it one day. And I'm here to tell you that no matter where you make it, whatever making it is, somebody's going to fucking try you. Facts. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're going to fucking try you. Big facts. But they may catch the wrong person because if you catch the wrong person, you try them, especially a person that loves to talk for a living and talk shit for a living. You know, you're playing, it's like Russian roulette. It's like literally putting a pistol to your head because I feel like people are saying, what the fuck you talking about? So I'm going to get into it. As you build your business, as you build your brand, we have three brands and then we have a brand together and Mm -hmm. we work in a brand together. There's a lot of dreams that go into that. There's a lot of hard work. There's Mm -hmm. sacrifice. You have children you have to sacrifice time from. Mm -hmm. There's a child you have to sacrifice time from. There's time you have to go into work when you don't want to. There's times you're sick or your kid's sick and you don't want to go nowhere. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When you do all of that in spite of what's holding you back, it's a motherfucker waiting to try you. It's a motherfucker waiting to try you. But sometimes, even in relationships, you get into a situation where you feel like there's an imbalance or you're not getting what you deserve, that you fuck up and lose everything you got. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a marriage, you feel like a motherfucker ain't smiling enough. So now you create an argument that makes that motherfucker want to leave because the straw done broke the camel's back. But now you got to sleep alone at night because that motherfucker don't want to be there because that one smile you didn't get was worth more than all the cuddling every single day. Some people still ain't here. I get it. Because I can't say every fucking thing I want. Because if I say every fucking thing I want right now, I'm going to piss off people to the extent that they may want to either jump off a bridge or go find another fucking hobby than pissing me off. And I'm not even pissed off an emotional instability type of piss off. I'm in a, I'm a young entrepreneur representing other young entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a motherfucker is going to try you today because they tried me. Always. There's always somebody going to try you. But this goes back to what my mentor said. Work hard to own your own shit so a motherfucker can never feel like you owe him anything. Mm-hmm. And that, and I, I thought about that and I said, you know, sometimes when I've tried to raise money or I've tried to build partnerships, I felt like, damn, I really want, I really want it. But with that investment comes an expectation. Mm-hmm. You know? With that partner becomes an expectation. And sometimes if your expectations ain't on the same page, a motherfucker will try you or you'll be tried. And I'm not the one to be tried because I've created a platform where we are the motherfucking judge and jury. We'll try your ass. Fuck around. (laughs) No, fuck around. Fuck around. Because I think the reason why, well, one, I ain't kissing no motherfucker's ass to get shit. You shouldn't kiss nobody's ass to get shit. 
<clears throat> I, this is all over the place because I really want to go in. But I just, the main message today, because I don't want to hurt a motherfucker's feelings too bad because it's some unstable motherfuckers. Just ain't getting no pussy, ugly, fucking piss ass motherfuckers out there listening to this shit. Motherfucker will try to flex on you and, and try you. They'll try you. But all you have to do is continue to stay calm. Mm -hmm. Know that you have a bigger purpose. Know your vision is coming alive. Know that the threat of losing you may be the reason why they act out. Mm. But you're still going to get tried. Mm -hmm. Keep options. No one's exempt. Know your value. When you know Period. your value, you can look a motherfucker <laughs> in the face and say, you tried it. <laughs> you tried it. But you got you, a pass today. You got a pass today. And that's all I'm going to give you. You're going to get one pass. This is not a season pass, bitch. <laughs> this is not a season pass. This is a one entry general admission motherfucker. Can't see no VIP. Can't get in front of the line. Got to go all the way the fuck to the back. Pass. It's a talent to know your value, though. Mm -hmm. It's courage to know your value. Yeah, Do you know strange. what I'm, I, I haven't had a motherfucker look me in my face in so long and tell me what the fuck I'm supposed to do? The fuck I'm supposed to do? Motherfucker, I get up every day and let niggas sleep comfortably in their beds. I could be the most vicious, vi visceral motherfucker on the internet. I'm smart, I'm resourceful, and I know everything moving. I pay attention to this shit, but this shit that ain't out in the public that I know, that I just choose, I choose to let niggas go to bed comfortably with their wives that they're cheating on. Or I let them go to dinner with their wives after they done sucked the dick. I let them live their lives. I'm not the motherfucker that people want me to be. I could be a motherfucker. Right now, I'm on a fucking roll. And they caught they caught me on the right day. And guess what? If you're listening at work, put your motherfucking headphones in because the nigga tried me. <laughs> he tried me today. Well, let's try this. Ooh. Hold on, I'm not done. He fucking tried me. You're going to be tested. I remember being in a foster home. The nigga told me, we got to go to church today. We got to go to church. I got to go to church today. Nigga, I was at church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I know it's Saturday, but we got to prepare for Sunday, so we have to go to church. I said, oh, this nigga trying me. But that nigga was trying me because he was trying to, he was a pastor. He was trying to get me to be a better person because he wanted me to get into the gates of heaven because he knew that I was, I had a little demon in me. Oh, my God. <laughs> From an early age. He knew I had the spirit. <laughs> so he was trying me, but he was trying me in a good way because he was wanting me to be a better person. So I said, okay, I'm going to fuck with this nigga. I'm going to ride with him. I'm going to go to church. And that nigga made me a better person. So what you see sometimes on the outside, this polished vessel, <laughs> it's my old foster father, who Elder Easter, who taught me to be kind and caring and thoughtful. And then there was the other side. There was the side that I had to have from the streets, streets of Philly, Chicago, Stockton, that said, if a nigga tries me, I'm going to fuck him up. It ain't always about punching them in the mouth. This motherfucker just want to punch them out, but you go to jail for that. So you just fuck them up another way. You just fuck up all their shit, fuck up all their money. Just fuck everything up. Somebody's listening right now saying, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that you could fuck up everybody's shit without even saying their name. Because saying their name gives them fucking praise. You just fuck up their shit because they tried me. That's all I'm going to say. Shout out to my elder Easter. Thank you for making me go to choir practice so I could sing these motherfucking words of praise. Thank you for making me go to Bible study so I could read in between the lines and let these bitches know the scripture of scandal because I will lay it at your front door. Thank you for sending me to Usher Board because I'm going to usher you bitches into hell if you keep fucking trying me. I feel a lot better. Okay, well, that's good. That's therapeutic. You let it all out. You Spew could, it out. It ain't even all the way because tonight I'm going to see Quavo and I love the Migos. And fucking Cardi B just texted me a picture of Daddy Yankee and said I look like him. Reminds me I ain't lost enough weight. Quit fucking trying me. I'm not going to be tried. People get the best version of me. If I was really the nigga that they want me to be, that wants to come out right now. That nigga wants to come out right now. He wants to come out right now oh, so bad. Don't. No, he can't. Because then the nigga trying me will win. The nigga that just tried me would win. I'm so angry right now. I don't even want to do the show. But I'm doing the show because our fans matter to us. And I just wanted to log in because the only message I have today, besides the fact that a cheeseburger tastes better when you're on a diet, is that a nigga is going to try you today. And you just got to be ready. I'm just going to start waking up in the morning and, and saying- And you just got to be positive in the interim of a motherfucker trying. No, you got to let a nigga know. No, you got to let him know and still be positive. You no got to let a nigga know. It only takes one big black eye for a bully to get his motherfucking ass kicked. And I'm not saying a black eye in his face. I'm saying a black eye. It could be a stain on his fucking credit. 
It could be losing the membership to Equinox because he got his ass whooped or caught jacking off in the steam room. God damn it. All you got to do is get a motherfucker good one time. You get a good motherfucker. I am not all about peace, love, and happiness. Fuck that. That well, shit belongs tell on tell someone, you know, about themselves, but nah. that's too much energy to exert. Oh, either. I just read a nigga like a fucking short film. Oh, I read <laughs> like him. Like a short film. <laughs> Did the nigga get read? This motherfucker tried me. It's okay. I ain't been tried in a long time. I didn't even know what being tried felt like anymore. I show up sometimes. People say, oh, this, that, whatever. He talks shit about me. I don't give a fuck about that. Opinions don't matter. But you know how you get so mad you just want to cry because you're so mad? Because if you kill a motherfucker, you go to prison. <laughs> Maybe it ain't that serious. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating. That's what I do from time to time. But no, the word of today, the, the message of today is no matter who you are, no matter where you are, until you own or in control of your own shit, a motherfucker is going to try you. Have the courage to figure that the fuck out. Mm. Figure it out. Absolutely. Have a plan, too. And if stay you, positive. If you're in that situation where somebody's trying you and you don't own your own and you're working under someone that owns something or... Let a part, it motivate you. Let it motivate you. Have a plan and move... The way you need to, yeah, you got to move on. Or have the courage to let that motherfucker know, don't you ever do that again. Don't you ever do that again. Because, you know, sometimes we fear leaving because of what we feel we're going to lose. When you don't realize sometimes you hold all the power and you leaving will make that motherfucker lose. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to flex a little bit and go, you know what? You think you better without me? Good luck, bitch. You think you can soar higher than me? Good luck, bitch. You think you look better without me next to you? Then good luck, bitch. Because I don't need you to be me. I don't need you. I told a motherfucker I could do this show in a goddamn treehouse, playing with monkeys and birds and fucking fireflies, and still this show will be the show. I don't care. You can't push a nigga to the limit to where they don't care anymore. <clears throat> you can't push a woman to where she doesn't care anymore. You know, women... Or she'll just leave your ass. She will leave you. Quick and in a hurry. Damn. I saw a story one time where a woman left her children. I said, you must be a cold bitch to leave your children. My mom left me, but she left me in good hands. This woman just left. Yeah. Oh, yeah she no. just left her children with, her, with the husband. Mm -hmm. You know, and the kids. I watched on an Oprah clip on YouTube. By the way, I still watch Oprah. She's not as canceled as she was last month. But she's Leave still Michael canceled. alone. You fuck with Michael again, Oprah, and I goddamn it, I'm gonna be in your ass like Gail. I'm gonna fuck who I'm gonna fuck you up. Well, anyway. <laughs> <sighs> Breathing Wusa. I tell you. God, I, I pray. I pray every day. You know, this morning I didn't pray because I went I ended up at brunch and fucking forgot I had to come to the show. That's why I'm half dressed today. But I will say that. Ooh, I'm so mad right now. <laughs> I'm not even as mad as I was like 30 minutes ago because now I just think about all the bullshit I just said. But I meant every fucking word I said. Don't fucking try me no more. You can try me one You, you ever get so mad you want to stay mad because it kind of feel good a little bit? Oh, I feel so good right now. <laughs> you, be no. to, you be trying to stay mad just a little bit like, let me tell you what happened. You started telling other people the story. I mean, let's be real. I'm not angry because I have a full day of, I, I mean, it's a motherfucker so fine landing in an hour. I don't give a fuck. That motherfucker so goddamn cold. I can't wait to smell this motherfucker when he walk in the door. I got somebody else buying him some clothes right now because he got to be cute when he go with me to the party tonight. But I ain't worried about that. In the grand scheme, I can't of, wait to see him. In the grand scheme of things, life is great. But all I'm saying, if you're listening to this, and I don't care if you don't like me or the show or any of us here, because that that doesn't matter. We know you love us deep inside. You just don't know how to express yourself. But if you're gonna fucking try me, listen to the show before you try me. Cause I'm done. I'm done giving passes. No, well, maybe I give. Yeah, no more passes. That motherfucker had a general admission pass. I forgot he just had a pass. Who I don't like passes. Mm -mm. Pass interference, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that what they say at football games? <laughs> yes. I've seen them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know sports. Shout out to Anthony Joshua. He's. I saw a picture of Anthony Joshua. He was in a, some just shorts and a hoodie last night, but he was. He. he you know, <clears throat> Britain's wear short shorts and he has these really amazing thighs and he was sitting next to some girl. I don't, I don't fucking remember what she looked like, but he looked so, he, Anthony Josh was so attractive. He has his fight June 1st. I want to try to get to this fight. He's fighting. Big baby. 
That nigga. Yeah. From New York. I hope he whoops his ass. I don't even know who that is. Mm, that's okay. Anthony Joshua's a star. Who do you want to win? <laughs> I want Big Baby to win. Really? I'm going for the States, man. Mm. Anthony that- Joshua's sick, though, but I got I got ref for the U.S. on this one. That motherfucker mm. tried me. Let me let Anthony Johnson uh, pull him up. Joshua. Anthony Joshua. I'll that, see. Hold on. You tried it. Now you're trying him. Now I know, <laughs> I'm a, I, now I know how Anthony Joshua was. I'm a heavyweight champion. You know what the fuck my name is? No, I don't. What up, Anthony? <sighs> don't fucking try me. That's mm, cool. Don't try me. You know, people say, oh, you tried it. They say it very com- conversationally. You tried it. it. It makes it a joke. You could fucking try it with the wrong person. You know, the thing about this business, you got to be careful because it's so many changes with Apple Music, Spotify, it's Google. The, the, people are every, and then you you end up in a room to pitch some shit, and the nigga that you tried is sitting right there. Or when the motherfucker hear that they gonna come to an interview in your building, they go, ah, right, you ain't going over that nigga. Boop, boop, boop. Now you 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 get your legs cut off from under you, and you don't even know. Mm. Man, you fucking tried it. What's up, y'all? It's time for another Hollywood hookup. That's now, right. I don't know if y'all know this about me, but I'm all about scents and smells. I like to wear like nice lotions and of oh, course yeah. I try to wear the best cologne I can like I'm sitting next to April he smells wonderful every single day is that what this is this is what this is about so you gotta understand like when it comes to smells and colognes there's a lot of issues you can have you could be gifted True. a cologne that's really nice and you can't find it on your own mm-hmm. or you can buy a really expensive cologne and you don't want to use too much of it so you got like a bunch of half you know, filled it's colognes because you just spraying one every other week just to keep it because <laughs> it costs so much money. Right. But I have a solution for y'all, man. It's what I What's use. That? It's called Scentbird. Oh, tell me about it. So with Scentbird, I found a way to have great taste without breaking the bank. Whether it's Versace or we're wearing Dolce & Gabbana or my favorite Tom Ford. Oh, you go yeah. to Scentbird.com and it keeps you smelling good from month to month. And you hear that. He says it's reasonable pricing, guys. Super you cannot reasonable. cannot beat that. So like I said, I like to use the Tom Ford from Scentbird. And the good thing is they give you a, a little valve that you can use. And it's just a month worth. And then you can switch it up. So I don't have to stick. Ooh, so uh, that's use, why you be smelling good. Yeah, because you know, when you usually buy cologne, sometimes it's so pricey, the good ones, that you s- stick to the same smell. And sometimes exactly. you want to switch it up. Sometimes I want an after shower smell. You know, start my what day else? off scent. So that's why I use Scentbird. It's fly. Okay. Yeah, I'm loving Scentbird. Okay. So in case you're confused right now, Scentbird is a luxury fragrance subscription service. All you got to do is choose the cologne that you want to try, and they'll send you a 30-day supply. So that's 120 sprays, Ooh. enough for you to apply more than four times a day. Let me tell you something. You'll be smelling good. Swagger. Very good. Okay. And with an exclusive offer for just our listeners, you can get 50% off your first month today, okay? That's, that's only today. $7.50 for your first fragrance. That's cheap. Go to scentberg.com slash unlock and use the code unlocked, okay, for your 50% off your first month. You can't beat it, guys. Uh-huh. Again, that's scent, S-C-E-N-T, bird.com slash unlock for you to try your first cologne or perfume. Yes. For just $7.50. Sign on. Smell amazing. And guess what, guys? It can also be a gift to somebody that you love. Hello. So another nigga that tried it, Kevin Hunter. Oh, boy. Wendy Williams. Poor Wendy. I saw a picture of her in Walmart. What is she doing on a golf cart in Walmart? Wendy? She's tired, man. She can't walk through there. Well, I said when we went to go visit her show, she looked a little frail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she needed help up the stairs for a couple of times. It was, it was uh, you know, I thought maybe she was just not feeling well, whatever. I don't know what it is. But Wendy, <laughs> Wendy is, no, don't care what you say. She is a treasure to what we do. She's one of the best. She's... She's highly entertaining. Her shit, like literally, when you're there, it just feels like you're in your homegirl's living room. Let's talk as shit. Mm-hmm. She's an she's an icon to me. I just wish her well. But there are people that took pictures of her in this golf cart or whatever the little handicap cart at the Walmart. What is you doing at Walmart? You got money. But anyway, she was there. Wait, and- you can't shop at Walmart because you got money. I still go to the thrift stores. Beyonce like was at pieces. Walmart. Beyonce got paid to go to Walmart. There's no way that girl went to Walmart. No, she was at Target. Oh, it was Tar- ah, she's different. been there more than spotted more than once. You think Beyonce just wakes up like, come on, Blue? No. I don't care how much money I get. I'm still, still going to a fucking Goodwill, period. Oh, my God. Goodwill just smells real stale. I just like going there. Reminds <sighs> me of my past. Get some scent birds. 
walk through. That motherfucker tried it. <clears throat> like Kevin Hunter? You know, it's crazy when you look in somebody's eyes that has an expectation of you they won't give to the, you themselves. Like, it's like being in a relationship with somebody that cheats on you, but they expect you to be faithful. How yeah. can you look me in my eye? <laughs> How can you look Many me in my face? Many people do it. Do they really? Yeah, yeah, the fuck they do. How can you look me in my face? You're in my face and you're asking me to do something for you that you won't do for me. I've, I, if, I've ever been that, if I've ever been that person, and I'm sure I have, maybe mm. this is my, mm -hmm. maybe this <laughs> is, yes, you have. maybe this is that person. Maybe this is my, maybe this, I try to say, God, what are you trying to get me to get? <laughs> God, come on, God. Maybe I tried somebody. Mm. I tried somebody, so I got tried. I had to get tried to know I was trying somebody. Man, fuck that. That shit has to end. I I, I have to start looking at myself because if I've made other people feel the way that I feel right now, goddamn, I owe apologies. So reparations will be handed out at noon. Because <laughs> a motherfucker tried me. <laughs> the title of this show is Hollywood... A motherfucker tried me. That's it. <laughs> I've been motherfucking tried. Do you, so back to Wendy Williams. Do you think gifts and money make up for cheating? Hell no. Not no. the way he cheated. No. And not at all. <laughs> yeah, but then. Not at all. Fucking cheating is cheating. Bullshit. Not the way he cheated my ass. No. I mean, when you have a baby while cheating, it's, it kind of ups the, the level of cheating. Yeah, but there's to me cheating is cheating. No, I'm, yeah, and to me cheating is a character. Does flaw. a oops baby ruin a relationship? Fuck yes. You. Really? Hell yeah. I was at my brother's house one day, and please don't get mad if y'all watch the show. But I was walking in the garage, and my sister in law was there, and my brother has had kids outside of his marriage on my sister in law. She watches the mm -hmm. show, and I love her. She's literally like a sister to me. Mm -hmm. And I go, whose kid is that? Because I don't come around. There's so many fucking nieces and nephews and cousins mm -hmm. and shit. I'm like, who's the kid is that? She was like, oh, that's Link's son. My dad's name is Link. My son's, my brother's name is Link. And his son's name is Link. So I'm thinking, oh, it's Link. Oh, no, it's your brother's son. With someone else. Got real weird. <laughs> because that motherfucker tried her. He tried her with that baby. That baby wasn't hers. It was some other woman's baby. Mm -hmm. So now I feel what she felt. Mm -hmm. But she was able to cope with that. Yeah, there's some women that, that can. Do you think it's a reason to end a relationship? Um, For me, it would be the end, end all be all. You know, I don't think for, I think there's some women who feel like they could stay in that, you know, but love is fucking blind and I'm not blinded by love. Fuck do, that shit. Do you think that teaches your kids the wrong message? Does it send the wrong message if you stay in a relationship where daddy brings home another kid? Like, hey, it's Christmas, sit up, put your brother up here. Um, not always. I think there are different reasons as to why somebody, somebody might have children on somebody, but teachers their own. Fuck, I don't know. I'm just telling you that if I was involved in that situation, I'm I'm gone. Yeah, man, because, you know, some people grow from it and you have a beautiful relationship and the girlfriend takes care of the kid, too. They can come over and have a family. And in some cases, it's just toxic. You know, that's one of the, the great dualities of life that two things can actually exist like that. Mm. Well, I pray peace and blessings to everybody. I want uh, Kevin and Wendy to be happy, but more importantly, more than Kevin, I want Wendy to be happy and I want Wendy to come back. And if she decides to come back and wants to leave his ass, Kim Kardashian, thankfully, is going to be an attorney and can possibly That's represent right. her. <laughs> She's stepping her game up. What that do you think about that? That fucking part. Um, I didn't even know. Wait, so... I don't know the the education of Kim Kardashian. Did she she went to school, finished college? Like no. So the only one that that went to college was Courtney. So you can just jump into law school. I thought you had to have like a schooling before school. No. Well, no. You can't. She um. There, I think there's different programs, just but pay. she did do um. Oh, you could jump right into law school. She finished high school, so I think you can take just you have to study for the bar exam, and then once you take the bar exam, then you can start completing. But would other... anybody take Kim Kardashian serious? I mean, no, I love, I love. But they the don't Kar take her serious now. I love the Kardashians, but if Kim Kardashian said, "Your Honor," I'd be like, "Nah, she tried me. Fucking tried me. <laughs> you ain't no fucking dope. attorney, Kim." I'm just playing. I think that is dope because it shows levels to to, you know, the simple fact that she's trying to fucking elevate. Like, she's yeah. trying to elevate. She's trying to change her life instead of looking like just the Kim Kardashian. She's going, she's fighting for people's rights. She's trying to do other things, and kudos. Yeah, get that bar exam. Yeah, people grow. 
Oh, and, and, and whatever uh, case she take on, it's going to be a high profile case. So already you got what? something in your favor. I would love to see Kim Kardashian representing Jussie Smollett. <laughs> Let me tell you something. She she went backwards. Your Honor, Your Honor, they was trying to suck his dick and pour bleach on him and called him a nigger. Make America great again. <laughs> Mm-mm. She went backwards. She got all the celebrity highlight and all that stuff. That's just who she is. And now she's going almost kind of becoming more regular. Something, somebody that can become uh, a little bit more relatable. Kim to Kardashian people. will never be regular. I'm saying relatable. Mm. You, yeah. you, people will feel more relatable to her because now she's actually going back to school. She's trying to better herself in that kind of make herself more smart. Well, all of the presidents have been attorneys and she's been doing a lot in the White House. Could you see Kim Kardashian as the president of the United hell States? To, hell no. President or first lady look like they really attacking that. But could you see Kim as the president? No, no. <laughs> you never After could- this Donald Trump stuff, man, it's, it's not too far off, to be honest. It's not too far off. Donald Trump was doing reality shows. Somebody like, you're fired. And no, I know. <laughs> I, I think if Joe Biden ran as president with Cardi B as his vice president, I think they could win. <laughs> Cardi B would <laughs> Cardi win. B. Cardi B would win the popular vote and for Biden. sure. <laughs> you don't think so? Uh, that what would that look like? I'm trying to see what that lineup. Would he'll look be like. like he'll be like America. I'm here to let you know that we are instill, reinstilling mm-hmm. policies of fair practice at the border. And she'd be like, Yeah, because niggas ain't going in cages. Somebody show me this video. Um, on YouTube of Cardi, it was the funniest shit. Um, it was like a, um, oh my god, like a remixed version of her talking about like governmental stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just like ah, bitch. <laughs> like it was. The, I need to pull this shit up. It was She's the funny. funniest thing that I've ever seen. Well, this Oregon dad, he confessed to staging a home invasion after stealing seven hundred forty dollars <laughs> of his daughter's Girl Scout cookie profit. Now he just ain't shit. Yeah, to get the cops off him. <laughs> Yo, you know what he did? He fucking tried it. He, he, showed, he fucking he tried his it. daughter. So what I'm going to start doing for the rest of this episode is educating y'all motherfuckers out there that ain't never been tried. It ain't talking about you niggas selling dope in the hood. Y'all niggas listen right around dirty. You've been tried and you're going to go to prison eventually if you keep playing. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. I want to go there. This nigga tried it. When your daughter's out selling cookies and we ain't talking about the vaginal area. We talking about cookies from a box. Well, real ones. well not a box like that. Yeah. If you're selling Girl Scout Short cookies bread. and you have a profit, <laughs> your daddy shouldn't be fucking staging a home. But this is this is this nigga's wife. And for I, I'm sorry, no dis- fucking dollars. No man. disrespect for to, our, to Austin, but this nigga's white because white people do shit like this. First of all, can you imagine if a nigga rolled up and stole his daughter's Girl Scout? That black people don't even think about shit like that. Black people do. You know what? I yeah, was right, bad man. as a kid because this reminds me. <laughs> this reminds me when I used to remember when you said you were involved in scams when mm. we were talking before. I remember that um, I did work for a company that you could go knock on people's doors. And I think it was for a Ameri- like what Red Cross or something. Mm-hmm. I was stealing the fuck out that money. Do you hear me? Yeah. Po- I was pocket- pocketing half of wait, it. Wait, wait. You were stealing money from Red Cross? You may want to reconsider that. Why? Sorry. That was a fucking kid. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I told a story on this show before. I used to sneak into funeral homes and take jewelry off of dead people. Okay, oh goodbye. Oh, my God. Now, that is is that bad? It yeah. just, it's just as bad as me stealing from Red Cross Yeah, but you understand, my mother was a drug addict, a prostitute. We were home with no food. We needed money. Like, I was a fucking young kid out. I was like seven. I was bad. I had no money. Okay. What, what was this little girl going to do with the money? Ooh, ooh. I don't know, but her where dad, does the but profits she go? For that. But where does it go? It don't matter. She could buy bundles. It's her fuck. Well, no, it's just a white girl because her fucking white daddy stole the shit. White people need to stop stealing from their kids. Black people need to stop putting cable in their name because that's that's some other shit. Yeah, that's stealing too. We don't teach niggas credit. And you go to school and you move into your whole life and you get 18 and you move in your house. You want to get your cable on. They're like, nah, bitch, you owe a bill of $5,322.52 because your mama tried it. Yeah. But she could have paid that bill if her daddy wouldn't have fucking took her um, Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> right, it's true. Somebody tried me today. I'm telling you, my spirit. My, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting calmer now because I feel like I've been able to get it out. People feel like you got to harbor people's secrets and don't make people look bad uh, by telling your tr- story. Tell your fucking truth, motherfucker. Try you tell your truth. I get blamed for being honest, man. I'm telling you, I don't give a fuck. You try me, or you try my people. You fucking getting put on blast. And I, I, you know, I walk in the room. This girl was scared to take a picture with me the other day. It took her 30 minutes to build up the courage to come and ask me for a photo. And I was so nice and I hugged her and she was like, oh my God, you're so nice. I thought you were going to be mean. No, I'm not mean, but I hope there is that sense of if you try it, he's going to come for you. Fuck that. Right. And even though that's out there, motherfuckers still tried it today. So that's well, the lesson. People will keep trying you. Yeah. Like this Krispy Kreme employee he stabbed a man. 
<laughs> after a fight over how to make donuts. He tried, he tried it. it. He tried it. He you fucking, know he tried, tried, it. fucking <laughs> tried it. And that man almost stabbed him. Or did he stab him? He did. Because <laughs> he couldn't make the fucking donuts. <laughs> donuts. You tried him because you were working at Krispy Kreme. You should have known how to make them fucking donuts. I just choked on my own spit. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Just hold that one. Uh, but yeah, uh, Krispy Kreme. <laughs> you know, we landed in Maui. Fucking Adam, they got the camera here. He says, you know, we're on an island where there's just one Krispy Kreme. And I'm like, well, you know, we on a diet. We, you know, we ain't, but I am. We can't handle Krispy Kreme. Anyway, when we rode through Krispy Kreme, we got, what did we get at Krispy Kreme? We got all kinds of donuts. Blaze donuts. Oh, we ate them motherfuckers, but off camera. <laughs> we filmed everything but eating those donuts. The Krispy Kreme is like... <laughs> Are you Krispy Kreme or a, or a Dunkin' Donuts? Krispy Kreme. Okay. Hands down. I don't like donuts, but if I have to eat a donut, I prefer the Krispy Kreme because it's warm and it's glazed. And it's Sugary. Moist. Oh, yes. Moist is a word that should never come out of my gas mouth. <laughs> I just feel like moist is like a straight word. Moist? Yeah, because like guys be describing pussy as moist. It's so moist. Or macaroni and cheese. Mm -hmm. Fucking up my Thanksgiving dinner, bringing mm -hmm. up shit that don't got nothing Sticky, to do with so it. tight. Anyway. Well, Motherfucker tried me today, y'all. <laughs> he tried me, and he looked at me, and you know, there's no privilege when you talk to me, because my mama white. I grew up around a white woman. She thought she was black. That bitch used to walk around talking about nigga this, nigga that, but I bitch, you're going to get beat up when you go outside. Keep calling, keep saying nigga, 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 you know, in the 80s. Right. You know, walk me to school, talking about nigga, get your ass back here. <laughs> she was white. My mama was, anyway. <laughs> they missed that. She tried it. They tried it. Gabrielle Union. Yes, Gabrielle Union. Shout out to Gabrielle Union. She went to uh, Pride with her 11-year-old stepson. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that beautiful? Support. That was important. So beautiful. And don't, I think Dwayne was not there, but he um, you know, was showing his son love over the internet and social media by reposting photos mm -hmm. and stuff that were sent to him. And it's just so awesome to see a young boy who is gay, you know, being supported by his family. And given the support to express himself. Exactly. I mean, that was... That was really big. And I don't think people understood how big that was. And when we posted on Hollywood Unlocked, a lot of people were in the comments being negative because, and I get a lot of criticism because people say, delete all the comments that are homophobic. No, this is the world y'all live in. Mm -hmm. Y'all niggas coexist in this bullshit. Y'all argue it out because them posting that homophobic comment is going to get a thousand non-homophobic comments, which is going to show them that the majority of people don't support you. The fact that Gabrielle Union could come out mm -hmm. in public supporting her son, who's publicly out at 11. Yeah. 11. And that's major, man. Shout out to Gabrielle. You are the Shout fucking out. mom of the year. 100%. It was good to see Jay-Z and Beyonce at the Glad Awards, too. I mean, Jay-Z coming from hip-hop and in the hood in Brooklyn and all that to go to the Glad Awards and mm -hmm. accept an award uh, from the gay community was also massive. That's what's up. For real. I don't think he got enough... Uh, Coverage. I don't think it got enough support. Honestly, right. I didn't even yeah, know. Yeah, but that. you already know. They don't be showing that. Jay Z type of stuff. went to the Glad Awards That's and accepted my... an award from the gay community. That's like, even Beyonce was like, I'm so proud of you. She told Jay this. I'm so proud of you being here to do this tonight. It's right. powerful. Because Beyonce is just, uh, the gays love Beyonce. So mm -hmm. yeah. She knows that. Mm -hmm. But anyway. That's dope. Man. Fucking try me again. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for another Hollywood hookup. Ladies, people always ask me, I guess my one best thing on my body is my hair. And people always say, April, you have amazing hair. How do you take care of it? What products do you use? Well, the product that I use is Pros. Now, let me tell you about it. Tell me about this. It's a custom hair care product that basically is personalized just for your own type of hair texture. Even me? Even you. Okay. I didn't know they did it that. It is 100% custom made for your hair your lifestyle, and your preferences. That's what I like to hear, because I need something custom to my lifestyle, the way Me I get it too. in. Me too, and I've been trying a lot of different products, but for some odd reason, it's like some products are too greasy, some products are not greasy enough, mm -hmm. you know? Some products don't add enough moisture, you know? But Pros is exactly customized for my particular hair. I'm like so happy. You think they can do me too? Because I need this. <laughs> I have more hair than you, though. Kind of I have more hair than you, though. So. They can fix nap. And guess what, guys? They have natural premium ingredients in them. Okay? I'm all about natural. Me too. You can customize these products to be gluten-free, mm. vegan. Okay. Silicone-free. That's right. And or fragrance-free for those who, you know, are into having a better lifestyle. Let us be free. Free. 
You can go to pros.com and get yourself a free consultation that covers everything from your diet to your exercise, your climate, to your water quality, that mask shampoos yes. and conditioners for your specific needs. Who doesn't want that? I need that. Because you know what? We don't think that sometimes the climate or that the water we drink has something to do with why our hair grows the way that it does, mm -hmm. but it totally does. So for girls who want to get longer hair, more luxurious hair, and want to take care of yourself and your hair in, better, in a better way, Pros is, is, is right for you. And guess what? This product is made in New York City. Shout hey, out New York. NYC? And it is shipped directly to your front door. No one is offering this level of personalization. Nobody. Okay? So get started right now, today, Hello. with your free consultation at pros.com slash unlocked. Yes. That is pros.com slash unlocked for your free. That is F-R-E-E -E consultation. You cannot beat it. Make a smart decision. Now. Pros.com slash unlocked. So, I didn't want to give you all that heat without giving you ways of protecting yourself when you're in the streets and a motherfucker tries you. What happens? The first thing you need to do when you're being tried is you have to be able to acknowledge that you're being tried. True. What does that look like? I'll tell you something. Somebody tried me yesterday. I'm not racist at all. I love everybody. I love mm -hmm. white, Asian, Latino, everything. I love everybody. And I mean that. I'm not just saying that because I'm about to lay up some racist shit. But I'm about to say something that's going to make somebody feel a certain way. Let's listen to this. If I get in an elevator mm -hmm. and you're in an elevator and you're clearly behind me and the door opens, you don't get to just rush in front of me because you expect to be able to get out no, first. No, motherfuckers need to say excuse me. They don't. <sighs> they don't. And I'm, I, I cuss their asses out. They don't. And Excuse you. They and don't. I say and, just like that. And they it's don't. typically people who ain't black. Uh, 100%. I agree with you. That's for sure. But black people always feel a need. Not always, but sometimes we also feel like, let's let them go. We got to stop that shit. I stopped the motherfucker right in their tracks. A man and a wife. They were behind me. Door mm. open. They went to move in front of me. She moved her little cross. Ah! Uh -uh! What you do, you Jason? tried it. No, I just went, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and they stopped because it, it startled them. And then I walked out. I look back. The fuck? You didn't try me. Now, you got to get the right person because you get the wrong nigga, he'll whip your ass. But they did not even expect me to stand up for myself. Mm -mm. People will try you. If I'm in line, I was in line in New York. To check. All the time. I was in line in New York to check into my room. And somebody walked and stood, a little woman, mm -hmm. a little white. Yeah. Walked and stood in front of me to be helped. I said, <laughs> That's how I be feeling. I said, Excuse me. Like, well, okay. You see my big ass standing? You fucking tried it. The fuck out of here. The mm -hmm. fuck out of here. That's what you said to her? No, I didn't. But I was just like, Ma'am, <laughs> ma'am, this is the line. The line is, the line starts for you behind me. At the grocery store, at the mall, they'll push past you, brush past you, touch you. You play. On the airplane. Okay. Time, Times Square Diner. <laughs> Like Times Square title. Diner in New York. I went there for breakfast the other day with this cute thing. And I said, I'd like a seat for two. And, and I looked in the restaurant. There's three open booths. And she goes, okay, you're going to have to wait 15 minutes for a seat. I said, no, I'm not. There's three open booths. She says, those are for three or more. I said, well, today they're going to be for two or more. Because I'm going to go sit down. There's three open tables. Why the fuck am I going to wait 15 minutes? She goes, she's Mexican. But that's the rule. Who the fuck made the rule? The managers. I walked up to him. Are you the manager? Yeah. He said, well, this is for three people or more. I said, well, today is for two or more. And I sat down. I said, let me tell you something. There's people in the diner who know who I am in there. Like, hey, Jason. I said, listen, I'm telling you right now, I'm about to act a fucking fool. <laughs> if you don't bring me some coffee, some eggs, and some motherfucking chicken sausage, because y'all <laughs> niggas is trying me. They tried me. They brought me now, on menus. Now, that's just ignorance, though. When they you can't let somebody. The yeah, they do. And I can't stand, who started this whole rule when you go to restaurants, if you don't have your whole, like, you're, you're a f party of five, right? Four people fucking there. You, gotta you still got to wait for the other you gotta person. You got to wait for that nigga bitch, that's still at the house. you need to sit me. Now that's trying somebody. They're trying it. I get mad because the bitch be really hungry. I got to wait for my one one friend. And you know, let's just say one friend, Jason. Jason, no, he be running late. <laughs> I'm always on time. Well, <laughs> Sometimes. yeah, for the most time. You know, but again, it's somebody out there listening to the show, thinking <laughs> this is all comical, saying, you know what? Psh I try people. I'm gonna keep trying them. Fuck it. Try Don't try me. More. I've been tried. I've been tried. Today was the, this is it. I, I'm done for the year. You can't try me no more. I'm done. I'm what done. 
He try to fuck up. You we know, just April. We we only in April. The devil will send somebody in to fuck up your day. They try. The, the devil is already working. Mm-hmm. If it ain't the devil, it's your baby mama. It's your baby daddy. Mm-hmm. It's your neighbor who's fucking your baby daddy. It's somebody out there right now planning to fuck up your day Hello. because they feel their whole. There are people who wake up to fuck up people's days. Mm-hmm. No fuck that. Go back to sleep, bitch. Die. Leave me alone. Stay the fuck away from me. Don't try me. I'm tired of being tried. I got tried today. Let him try me. Motherfucker told me they gonna, they gonna send me some. That was that was harmony, right? Yeah. Motherfucker said they gonna send me some paperwork. Yeah, send me a check. I don't know. Pa- Paper check. Period. <laughs> Fucking try me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> we need to count how many times Jason said try. At I least said, like fifty five. I sent Janet Jackson some flowers. She posted them. She didn't at me, but it's cool. We know who gave it to her. <laughs> Does that fall in the line of trying? No, she posted the company that is one of our brands. So the flowers was, you gave us? Yes. Oh, I love. We that. sent her this thing and said, "Congratulations, Janet. She uh, was inducted into the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, that's fire." And I have a picture of her she took with Jan- Janelle Monet and Lil' Kim. And yes. it's, yeah, I like it. But anyway, shout out to Janet Jackson. I love the Jackson. She's guy. so beautiful. <sighs> she tried it. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. She's Janet Jackson. She can do whatever the fuck she wanted to do. That part. I love her. Um, okay, so look, if you could bring back one singer from the dead, who would it be? One singer from the dead? Mm-hmm. Who are you going to get? Man, this is, I, I got to think about this. Whitney I'm, Houston. Yeah, I was going to say Aaliyah too. I like Aaliyah Swag. Aaliyah. I'm thinking about her in the movies, like just even outside of the music. Like Aaliyah would have been that person in the movies, the music, everything, fashion. I think she would have been doing what Rihanna's doing now a little bit back then. If there's one group that can get back together, what group would you want? First the Fat Boys break up. No, one group. Mm. Bring back Nelly and the St. Lunatics, man. I'm ready for the... Uh -uh. Uh-uh. You not feeling Nelly? What? Not that we're, I'm not. It's not that I'm not feeling Nelly. Why? Well, they were dope. At the, they was that dope. a group? Yeah. yeah they were Nelly. Right. It was Nelly. In the same. Wait, wait, wait. Because oh, right, it was Murphy Lee. Murphy Lee. Well, I remember Nelly's always been a star or whatever. But yeah. I mean, it's, it's been Nelly and the what? St. Lunatics. Was it Nelly and the St. Lunatics? Yes. They were all like a crew. Like Diana Ross and the Supremes. Yes. Kind of, yeah. Fuck out of here with that shit. That's yeah. what we need. That'd kill the millennium tour. Well, I'm telling I would you. love to see the Wu Tang back together. Yeah. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. They just put something out. I mean, it wasn't every everybody, but it was most of them. What about the four original members of Boys to Men? Uh, yeah. Oh, I know. I want In Vogue to get back together. That's a, that motherfucking group right there. Them I didn't girls. Know they broke up. What? They, they stay broken up. Because <laughs> somebody in the group be trying it. Mm. It's always somebody fucking trying it. Fuck up some shit. I'm going to tell you something. Mark my word. <laughs> Y'all going to stop trying me. Y'all gonna stop at y'all, y'all, y'all. Listen, listen, y'all. I'm gonna be the one to tell y'all as a witness up in this motherfucking room. Please stop trying, Jason Lee, because he is not to be tried for the rest of the year. Okay, we on what day today? April 10th. Somebody gonna try it. Please leave him alone. I'm gonna stop just being nice. Fuck it. No, I'm I'm back to being nice. I can't be mean for too long. Cause I don't believe in being mean, man. Like I don't want to be mean to people. I just want people leave me the fuck alone. Just go over there. I'd be somewhere like if I'm on the basketball court, which I'm never at. But if I was on a basketball court, <laughs> no, but if I was on a basketball court and people were fighting, I would just be like, yo, y'all keep that energy over there. That's you being nice. Why do people you fight on a basketball it. court? Do people really, are they that upset over the game? It's a game. Testosterone Hell yeah. is a fucking thing. Is that what it is? Yes. Y'all men are crazy. Men are crazy? Yes. Y'all be fighting over some stupid shit during basketball. I'm sorry. Women fight every day on social media, regular day life. <laughs> and men don't? But fighting I on know, social media. No, not like how y'all be going That's at bullshit. it. That's bullshit. Look at Kodak Black and all these people and stuff. Y'all, there's the men I that be going on here acting Keep telling y'all be letting y'all animals out the zoo. That's just the problem. But they, I don't want to smoke. Don't try me, Kodak Black. Don't try me. <laughs> it be the men on social media. Women, I mean, we been catty. <laughs> that was the, the answer for it. Ladies. We, we been caddy. Just saying. Well, listen, this has been an informative <laughs> show about a motherfucker that's trying it. If you're at work right now and your boss who tried you, because there's somebody at work right now listening and your boss has tried you, walk behind that motherfucker and act like you're going to punch him, but then don't. Just turn around and hug him. <laughs> that's right. Leave with Show peace. them love. Show them love because, you know what I mean, your haters are showing love to you. 
It's your haters is showing love to you right now. It's a hater right now showing love to you. I'm gonna go on my Instagram right now. It's gonna be a motherfucker telling me that they want to hang out because of Quavo's party tonight or Nipsey's. What time are you going? Tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm gonna be on time. Okay. Mm-hmm. As soon as my security get to my house, because I am not going without. They ain't gonna catch me. You have the flyer. Can you resend it to me? No, oh, for tonight. Tonight. Oh yeah, I'll send it to you. Thank you. All right. So, any last words you want to give before we get out of here, April? Um. Just don't try Jason Lee anymore. And um, please don't try me either. Okay? Because I'm going to be riding the same motherfucking boat. Okay? Damage. Period. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? That's it. <laughs> okay. Well, the last thing I will say is that um, pray for your enemies, man. Pray for your enemies. And sometimes your enemies, they, they don't always come to destroy. Sometimes they come to infiltrate and shake things up so they can feel like they got the inside scoop. But you know, I'm gonna pray for all my enemies because I'm gonna pray that they learn one thing about me and that is do not fucking try me. <laughs> and on that note, we are out. Peace. Peace.